Hey folks, everything new under the sun. It is Friday, March 25th. And as, as we read a Bible prophecy, we, we recognize kind of the overall, the high level view of what kind of to expect at the end of days. And we look at these things and, uh, you know, those prior to World War One, World War Two, uh, looked at events happening and said, you know what, this, this kind of looks like uh, uh, Revelation. This kind of looks like uh, maybe what's uh, coming up in, in Daniel and uh, and Zechariah, you know, with, with the bombs and, and, and the various uh, weapons of war that were being used. And people wondered, are these the last days? And and there's, you know, several uh, significant things that happened during those times that would uh, give you uh, the idea that uh, maybe those were. And uh, I think the difference is the number of things that are um, converging, that are coming together, that are uh, growing, uh, coming faster and, and growing exponentially in terms of economic trouble, uh, a famine trouble, um, the, the threat of um, complete world annihilation from nuclear weapons, World War III. Uh, I think there's several factors that you can look to to say, you know what, um, this time more so than World War I, World War II, uh, suggests that the Lord's return is very near. And while it looked like the Lord's return was near then, I think you would look at those uh, after the fact and say, you know what, uh, this, this is, uh, the potential for this is much worse given the current world situation. Now we're sitting on the precipice of um, um, global famine, global economic collapse, World War III, and pandemics. Uh, that we you know have no control of uh, and the, the government will lock us down if there is one uh, which stops all our product productivity uh, prevents our ability to, to make money and and uh, and uh, really be productive and, and so we, we see all these things coming upon us and uh, I, again we liken it to the seals of revelation uh, and uh, so the first seal the white horse uh, had a bow, given a crown, and, and we know, uh, you know, people have likened this to Corona, the coronavirus, going out uh, to conquer, um, conquering and to conquer, and the red horse, where peace is removed, violence increases, and then the black horse, the balance scales, huge inflation, what are we seeing right now, oh, inflation, what's the biggest threat to mankind, at least the western society right now, inflation, What's going to go up if, you know, interest rates go up uh, 10, 15, 18 percent, um, you know, on your on your mortgage? They were there at one time. Inflation. That's the third horse, the, the black horse. And I don't even believe that the horses are riding it. I believe, uh, like John Holler, that, uh, you know, they're, they're suiting up. They're, they're getting mounted on their horses ready to ride. Uh, so we, we ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, inflation, I think, is 7 percent in the U.S., I think, again, we haven't seen anything as compared to what is going to happen when the full horsemen ride. The fourth seal, the pale horse. Death, uh, Hades with them, quarter of the earth, killed with the sword, famine, death, and beasts. So maybe speaking of a pandemic, another Jesus, maybe a, uh, a whole bunch of things coming at us. So think of avian flu, which is taking out a lot of the poultry in the United States and Canada, uh, where they're culling whole farms worth 50, 100,000 chickens all at once because of avian flu. And where I am, the threat uh, is now real and has the avian flu has been found where I am. And uh, again, what the government can do is they can come to your place and cull your whole flock of chickens. If you thought you had, uh, if, if you were a good prepper, you've, uh, you're producing your own food. Nope. Uh, they could come and cull all your animals effectively if there was bird flu. What happens when there's a food disease, a foodborne disease? Wait for that to come next. Um, <clears throat> there's a, you know, potato wart, um, for example, uh, in uh, in Prince Edward Island. And uh, it, it was limited for export to the United States because of this potato wart, which, which, which was found in two fields. They had to cull or, or destroy millions of pounds of potatoes, all because of uh, uh, this potato wart, so-called, which doesn't limit you from eating it, uh, but it limits it, it. It's not nice for selling, and so they stop all sales of it, and they destroy all product because they don't want to destroy the price of the product. They don't want to flood the market with cheap potatoes, so they destroy it instead of eating it. 
And what happens when the government is involved in this and you have some big uh, food borne uh, disease where the government says, you know what, if you have this, we're going to come and destroy all your crops. We're going to come and uh, kill them all. We're going to come and destroy all your poultry, uh, your your hogs, if you're if you're keeping hogs, your 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 cows. We're gonna go and cull all your cows because of this current whatever disease going around. And this is what the government has control of now. Um, not only do they are they allowed to do that, and will they come in with force to do that? Um, but they even uh, you know require everybody to register now all the animals that you have, even small producers. If you have even one bird, you have to register with the government to tell them you have you know poultry or whatever it may be. Well, this is the coming world government where they have knowledge and have, you know, a data, data banks worth uh, of, uh, you know, global knowledge of everything that's happening. Why? Well, so in, in the name of uh, science and, and protecting you, they can uh, protect you and protect the world. Uh, but ultimately, it will be used to control you. Uh, they will have all the information on you, so they will be able to control you. That's what's coming down the pipe. Here is a Zero Hedge article. Biden casually says food shortage going to be real. He says in a quote, uh, it's going to be real, Biden said at a news conference in Brussels. The price of the sanctions is not just a po uh, imposed on Russia. Now, at this point in time, you can't disagree that what is happening in the, around the world is completely planned. Uh, whether the pandemic was planned or not, certainly the lockdowns were planned and that was enforced by government. Now the government is basically enforcing uh, inflation spike, uh, cost of fuel and energy spike. Uh, they're, they're forcing a world food shortage and a famine worldwide. How? In the name of sanctions on Russia. And I said from the start that this is, this is scary, that where the whole world can effectively cancel you as a whole country financially. Every company comes out and says, we're canceling effectively uh, we're stopping all business with Russia or in Russia. This, the whole world and private organizations have come and said, we're canceling Russia. We're stopping all business. And what are the collateral damage effects of all this? Well, they hurt you and I. Yes, we prefer that Putin does not go into Ukraine. But at the end of the day, all these economic uh, 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 sanctions are causing massive trouble around the world. And we're just coming out uh, or trying to come out of a pandemic where the government already locked us down, already limited our, our food production, our uh, ability to earn in income. And now they are implementing policy, which uh, is effectively going to starve us to death. Biden himself says it's going to be real. The price of sanctions is not just imposed uh, upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. Impose. The sanctions are not just imposed. Read those words. Those sanctions, effectively, what he is saying, are imposed on United States, Canada, all the countries of the world. Because what hurts Russia, it hurts everybody else. And it's going to hurt China. And now they're coming out and they're threatening China, saying, China, don't go, uh, uh, don't go to bat with Russia. Otherwise, we'll sanction you. Well, where does most, where do most of our products come, or at least components, come from China? And you're now threatening China with this? Uh, effectively, they are causing starvation, uh, economic collapse upon us. It, this is designed. Now, they are doing it on purpose. I don't know what the motive is. Uh, you know, the, the argument is, well, what is the motive? Is it for global control? I don't know about that. Point is, they're designing it right now for whatever motive may be. In this, in this case, maybe to stop Putin. But at the end of the day, it's planned, it's purposed, they're doing it, it's affecting us all, they're admitting it. And it's just an incredible revelation uh, from Biden. Uh, Zero Hedge again. <clears throat> the inflation disaster is collateral damage from lockdowns. So this whole pandemic thing where we had unprecedented lockdowns never really occurred in history. Um, some say it occurred in the 1918 pandemic where there was some lockdowns and limitations on travel. Uh, but I don't think anywhere near the world global lockdown that they did. And uh, what do we get out of it? Uh, thank you, government, for forcing us to lock down. There is now massive inflation, making it cost a lot more for all of us. Who gets richer? The rich people. Who gets poorer? The poor people get poorer. It's a massive transfer of wealth. Again, 
Whether the motive was uh, evil or not, or whether it was purely to protect human life, the end result is that the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. There's a wealth transfer from the poor to the rich. And there always is when there's economic trouble or collapse or crisis. Uh, von Greyers, Yvonne Von Greyers, all hell will break loose for humanity. That's an apocalyptic subject line. We are now at the end of an era of economic and moral decadence. In a debt-infested world built on false values, there is no um, absolute truth anymore. Certainly, the morality of the Bible isn't taken seriously anymore. Everybody has their own truth. Everybody is their own God. He says, fake money and abysmal leadership. He says, there are eras in history that have produced great leaders and thinkers, but sadly, the current era has produced nothing of the kind. The end of an economic cycle produces no great leadership or statesmanship, but only incompetent leaders. It goes on, and this is a quote from Confucius. The superior man thinks always of virtue. The common man thinks of comfort. And I suggest that's where we are. The common man, I don't, uh, you know, Confucius is a fake god, uh, but uh, and an idol uh, for those who worship uh, Confucius. Uh, however, this statement is true. The common man thinks of comfort. What do, uh, you know, most citizens of Canada and U.S. think about? What do they vote for? They just vote for something that's going to make their life a little bit easier. Uh, you know, a little bit more on the employment income check, a little bit more on the dental care. Uh, you know, who's going to pay for it? Well, I don't know. The next, the neighbor over is going to pay for it. The whole country is going to pay taxes. Or, or maybe the worst case scenario... Who knows where the, the, the money comes from as long as uh, my dental care is paid for, my medical care. I'm not saying those are bad things, but at the end of the day, you've got to understand, we're all paying for this. And so at some point, we got to say, you know what? At some point, people are responsible for uh, themselves, but the world doesn't want to do that. Um, this is an interesting uh, one. Russia steps up bombardment of Ukraine's cities, demands energy payments in rubles. So they are fighting back economically uh, against all the sanctions. And they're saying, you know what? Now, Europe, if you want our gas, you can't. Don't pay us in euros or U.S. dollars. Pay them in rubles because the rubles have effectively been shut down, destroyed uh, by all the sanctions. And now Russia is saying, well, if you want to heat your house, you got to give us rubles. That's going to increase the value of the rules, rubles because now Europe needs to trade or sell some uh, euros for some rubles, which increases the value of the rubles because now there's more demand for those rubles uh, and then pay those rubles back to Russia. And then they got to uh, buy more rubles next time they want to fill up their tanks again. Right? So very interesting tactic by uh, Russia. But along uh, the idea of, you know, the world uh, uh, going downwards is this idea of the Titler cycle. Now, I've spoken of this cycle before where we have uh, this circle here, Titler cycle. You go from faith into courage, into a, a, a situation as a, a citizenry, as a, as a country, to courage. And then you go from courage and you fight, you fight for freedom, you fight for liberty. And out of that liberty, liberty, a generation, two generations go past, and then you know, uh, you know, standing on the shoulders of uh, <clears throat> your 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 father, your grandfather, you're now living in abundance at the bottom here. And because you're living in abundance, you haven't worked for, fought for your freedom. Uh, you haven't had to have courage. You move into an area of selfishness. Well, just think all about yourself. You're rich. You didn't have to do anything for it. And so what the, what happens then? Well, you're complacent. You don't care uh, what's happening in the world. Uh, you, you're you sitting pretty. You are comfortable. And then apathy, where you don't care anymore. You don't care about anybody. As long as you're safe, uh, you don't care about anything else. And then at that point, you go into dependence, top left corner. And dependence is where you depend on your money or you depend on the government, uh, and part of that, uh, if you come out of abundance and the government starts paying uh, for your, uh, you know, your health insurance, your your rent, uh, starts subsidizing you know, these things, you start to depend on the government. You go through the same things: selfishness, complacency, apathy, dependence. And this is where we're getting to here, with all the dependence on government. What happened in the uh, in the pandemic? We were all locked down. What did people do? They collected government checks. The government gave us all checks. Whose money was that? 
well, that was my money, that was your money that we paid to the government in taxes, but we were happy to take the tax money back in the form of a small check, uh, a fractional amount of what we paid into taxes to make us feel better and to make us more dependent on the government and to support all the small businesses which are which were uh, which are being destroyed by the government imposed lockdown the government came out with a decision that has destroyed small business and then our taxpayers come uh, and and you know or our tax dollars come and now prop them up because the government wouldn't allow them to do business so my government that I elected you know I didn't elect the, the existing government I voted otherwise but the governments were voting in they are choosing to lock everybody down and they are cho then choosing to take all of our money and use it to keep all the people they lock down uh, out of poverty just enough, you know, so they don't, small businesses don't uh, close too quickly to make them look like they're doing something in the name of public health and safety, of course. And then as we're all on the government dole, we move to a situation of bondage. Now the government can say, you know what, you're taking government money, you're taking tax money, you can't be... Uh, anti-abortion you can't say any you can't uh, you know conversion therapy therapy you can't uh, 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 counsel someone to turn away from uh, uh, being uh, homosexual uh, or, or having a sex change or something you can't counsel them away from that and what are you gonna do are you gonna refuse the paycheck from the government are you gonna refuse uh, the, the the tax benefit and the tax-free status uh, from the government? No, because you're in bondage now. You're you're addicted to the free money, and you'll lose money. You'll lose your job. You won't have any money uh, to feed yourself if uh, you don't go along with what the government says about morality and all these things you know that Christians should be speaking up for. And ultimately, you know, at the end of the cycle, when everything completely crashes, we hit rock bottom. We and everybody's desperate. People turn back to God, to faith. And then we're full circle. And that's really kind of the situation. Bondage, a point of denigration, despair, where no change will help. Spiritual or faith, people oppose the conditions and search for some unity in a common cause. Courage, the fight for freedom. Liberty, success, the formation of codified freedom, maybe democracy, a promise of opportunity. And then you go to abundance, maturing of the government, material growth, prosperity, and then selfishness, the greed of material gain corrupts special interest groups, often using the levers of government. Once there's a bunch of money from abundance, then people start uh, voting and taking bribes and, uh, and making decisions based on money instead of morality or what's good for uh, the human, the citizen. Complacency, complacency, the sense of entitlement of legacy groups with whining and complaining of the development conflicting interests. Apathy, accept no responsibility for problems and blames everybody else for the corruption. This is what people do when they've given up. Uh, they're on the government dole. Um, they blame everybody else for the state of the world. But as long as the government's still paying their paycheck, uh, you know, they're not going to make a big noise about it. They won't stand up. They won't go protest. Dependency, control of independence to control corruption and centralization uh, of freedom leading back into bondage. Where are we now? We're absolutely in dependence. We're at the last uh, item of that tight or cycle of history. We are in bondage to the government. Our free speech is being limited. Our free movement of travel, if you're unvaccinated, you can't fly on a plane yet in Canada. The federal government has not removed it, although most provinces and territories have removed pretty much all restrictions now. The federal government, you cannot get on a plane, train, uh, or... Uh, or uh, ferries uh, because they're federal, federally regulated, uh, and uh, you know if you're not vaccinated, uh, government has total control right now. It, you know, if you took the same situation and you went to a communist uh, society, there would be quote unquote Western groups uh, saying uh, denouncing uh, those communist governments. You know, saying that it's inhumane to not allow people to travel, like in China with their social credit system. But it's happening in Canada. We are in the dependency stage. And this is another reason that's de from dependence to bondage. And, you know, you can put those together. And being dependent really means being uh, in bondage. You put those together and you say, you know, we're at that at that time in history. So something big, a reset is coming. A world reset is coming. We are in the very last days 
I think Yvonne von Greyers uh, has it correct. Uh, I think uh, there are consequences just ahead. I think a sort of a hell will break loose, uh, although not the real hell. Real hell will be, well, I'm not going to put a number on it. Real hell will be far worse, but we are going to see uh, last day's events, shock and awe events happening, especially when the four horsemen of the apocalypse ride. It's going to be unlike anything you've ever seen or anybody has seen in history. If you think today's, uh, the things happening today are hard and crazy, uh, you'll, uh, well, they are not effectively. What's next? I think we go into a cycle of uh, a bit of a calming period, a bit of a respite, although the respite is shorter. Remember, birth pains. They increase in frequency and intensity. As the intensity increases, the frequency, how, how quick that intensity comes, increases. And the uh, times of respite, the, the low points, uh, of, you know, the polar opposite of intensity, those shorten as you get closer and closer to the birth of whatever the event is. And so we're heading into a, a bit of a respite. Russia apparently uh, is, uh, is looking to pull back and maybe just take Donbass and Luhansk instead of uh, trying to hold the whole country of Ukraine. So we'll head into a little bit of a respite. Things will calm down a little bit, but they won't go all the way down to where they were. Of course, there'll still be sanctions on the table. And then we'll ratchet up again and there will be something else massive to come along. So we, the, the, the time periods from... Peak to peak, intensity, intense item to intense item are going to increase. Look how fast it was between the convoy in Canada uh, and to, uh, to Russia, which is a war, I think, uh, again, that wasn't all Russia. I think Western powers wanted this war, and they're trying to keep it going, in fact, by threatening China. And all government powers like it because it's a time that they can reset. They can lay down more laws, control the uh, citizens even more. What did the Canadian government do? With the convoy organizers, well, they're charging more of the organizers even now. They're introducing even more laws to limit financial freedom, to, to track and trace where money is going. Uh, a lot of it in the outcome of this, and uh, they've been wanting to do that, and they are cracking down. We don't live in a free country, and when people try and stand up, you see very, very quickly how, how um, limited that freedom truly is. And just in this past week, there's videos of European leaders. Trudeau went and spoke to the European Parliament. European leaders, at least two that I saw, denounced Trudeau uh, for his human rights uh, track record in Canada with the convoy and said he shouldn't even be speaking at the, uh, at the European Parliament. So good on the European leaders for seeing that and denouncing him as if he was a North Korean dictator. Uh, will he learn? Probably not. Uh, is Canada embarrassed in, in front of the whole world? Absolutely. And uh, everybody sees Trudeau for the leader. He is now Western uh, European leaders uh, as well. And it's an incredible thing to see. So if you haven't seen those, um, go Google that. Um, European leaders uh, denounce uh, Trudeau. Very interesting stuff. So times are getting hard. I, th I think we will go into a bit of a respite over the next couple of weeks. And then, you know, what's the big next spike? Avian flu? A flare-up uh, in the war, maybe chemical weapons used. That's the next red line in Ukraine. Uh, Biden came out and said, if, if chemical weapons are used, that's going to be our excuse to go to World War III. Biden wants the war uh, to increase. I think it deflects from his presidency and the economic trouble that allows uh, them to stay in emergency mode. We went into emergency mode with the pandemic, and the governments want to control. They want to continue that emergency uh, situation that emergency measure situation where they can print as, money, as much money as they uh, uh, are able. They want to hold on to that power. They don't want to give up any power that they've taken. Think about income tax in North America. That was supposed to be temporary. I think it was in the U.S. Income tax was a limited time only uh, thing uh, until it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, there was no tax at one point in time. And then they said, oh, we're just going to have it for a little while. And we're, we're going to stop it. We're going to stop all income tax at, at some point. Uh, and then it, you know, 50, 70, 80, I don't know what it is, but go go read your American history. And uh, such a long time later, we still have income tax and it is cr increasing. Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, ends up being about 50% of our income in Canada these days. You know, when you, when you add it all up, I guess, massive percentage of income goes to uh, propping up the government. So folks, I will leave there. Long video. Uh, apologize for that. 
but a lot of things are happening in the world, and uh, I think we're on the biblical timeline. And again, we're looking for these four horsemen to start riding. I don't think we're there yet. I think I think things get a lot worse even before the four horsemen ride. Uh, we get even closer to the brink of nuclear war, um, and then a world leader stands up. Watch for something in the Middle East. The Middle East, I will say, has not been quiet per se, but it has been quieter on uh, the world media stage than Russia, Ukraine. So look for something to flare up there. That's where my eyes are watching right now. Syria, especially Iran, with the uh, with the uh, nuclear pact and the concessions that the U.S. is giving to Iran as it relates to the nuclear pact. Iran is increasing uranium enrichment significantly and not accepting any lesser in the pact going forward. So that's kind of the next thing, I think, to drop uh, a war in the Middle East, a significant uprising, uh, maybe a strike by Iran. And then we have China-Taiwan situation as well that we're paying attention to. So thanks for watching, folks. I'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.